and welcome to another edition of Trader Talk TV. Today I've got Steph Miller in the office from uh, Publica. Steph, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. And today we're talking about uh, unified auctions in CTV. And Steph's come in to explain that and a bunch of other stuff, including the sort of next update of the Open RTV protocol. Before we do that, Steph, can you do an introduction to yourself and the company you represent? Sure thing. I'm Steph Miller. I'm commercial director for EMEA for Publica. We are a CTV ad server and we focus on maximizing revenue for our publishers whilst also creating a seamless ad break for the end user. Excellent. Now, a lot of our viewers would know what header bidding is and we've used it for, for many, many years, but today we're going to go through what it means in CTV because obviously there's a whole, whole new sort of uh, data-driven aspect to TV and that's CTV. It's growing hugely in Europe, uh, LATAM, APAC, North America, everywhere. But today we're talking about header bidding and Steph's coming to the office today to go through that and talk about some of the cool stuff that's coming up in RTB. So, Steph, I know a lot of the sort of old school programmatic heads would know this, but some TV people would not know about this. So talk, to, talk through the sort of header bidding piece for CTV, please. Okay, sure. So we actually call it Unified Auction. Oh, there you go. In CTV. <laughs> unified um, Auction. Yeah, and the reason why we call it that is because there's no header um, for it to sit in. We actually sit server side. So, um, yeah, it's like you say, a lot of the people who've worked in programmatic and digital advertising in the past have, have seen this. They've seen the benefits of it. Um, but actually, that's not the case over in the broadcast world. And that's what we're bringing to the, or one of the things that we bring to the table. So I can quickly yep. map it out, I guess. So um, back in the day in programmatic and also now in uh in TV, you have your ad stack set up like this, you'll get your bids in and you'll have your different SSPs that you give your priority to. Maybe you've got your PMP and your PG here, and then you've got this daisy chain of priority offering people access to your inventory. And that's fine, but you're going to lose time and money in each of these jumps. And down here, you might have the person that's willing to bid the most on your inventory, but they either might not get the option because somewhere here wins it, or they, by this stage, they could have timed out, or they might not be, it's not as valuable when it gets down to here. So what we have introduced is the unified auction um, or header bidding from the previous life, which is where all of those bids would all sit together and com compete against each other. So you've got a load of opportunity here. First of all, that means that this one and this one are equal in here. Um, and so then that winning bid that's down here actually would get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It reduces the time and also it creates auction pressure in your, in your bid. So you should see about 20 to 60% uplift in your revenue. We did this back in the day when we turned on EBDA or header bidding and we did see the, those kinds of revenue uplifts and also at that time uh, there was a ton of supply and a ton of demand. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a lot less supply, you've got a lot of uh, scarcity in the market so you can imagine that that would also have a better uplift on your revenue as well. So where is it uh, demand coming from? Is it unique demand? It's like, so does publishers have to, and CTV um, owners, do they have to think about where that demand is coming from? Yeah, absolutely. You've got to have, it's a good question, you've got to have a few SSPs obviously plugged in here for it to actually add value. Mm -hmm. So if you've just got one, then you haven't actually got a daisy chain anyway yeah. uh, to work against. But yeah, so you've got to have a few SSPs pushing in, and yes, it does help if you have unique demand coming in as well. Yeah. So how, where do you fit in that process, and what, what sort of, how does Publica work with the, the publishers and the, the, the CTV owners? Where do you sit in that process? Well, we'd be this bit. We'd be the tech that runs yeah. this auction for you, that takes in all of those bids and then listens to your rules and helps you make that decision to uh, fill your ad pod. Yeah. What about the adoption in terms of, like, uh, the publishers, are they, uh, the publishers you work with, are they seeing uplift or is it like, is it a learning process for a lot of them? Yeah, it is. And I think some people are leaning in because they have experienced this uh, from a few years ago in programmatic. Others are a bit less uh, or a bit more skeptical about it because they haven't seen the benefits of that. And what my whole point is, is that I want people to uh, look at, I guess, the mistakes and the efforts that we made in mobile and in digital advertising in the past and rather than take five years to get to the stage that it took us to get to in programmatic maybe you leapfrog that and get to your making a lot of revenue mm -hmm. um quicker yeah yeah 
there's some interesting stuff going on with the o Open RTB 2.6 update, uh, and that's going to change the game a little bit uh, in terms of what we can and can't do in CTV, particularly around how inventory is priced. Uh, traditionally, we've priced by 1,000 impressions, but obviously, with as you point before about supply being so finite, there's huge opportunity to increase yield across that. So I want to talk to you about a little bit about um, this cost per second piece because I think it's quite interesting. You were explaining it before we went on air, and you were talking about like how it actually increases value of inventory depending on where it sits in the brick. So let's talk through that because it's, it's it's super interesting from a from a CTV point of view. Yeah, I think um, so. Where. Um, we're really pushing for SSPs to have implemented um, 2.6 by June. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also imperative for publishers to also put that pressure on to their SSPs as well to try and make sure that they're doing that so that they can, they can maximise their revenue and maximise their yield. And it is about that, you're right, that finite inventory and making sure that you're really maximising every opportunity um, that you have when you're put in front of that end user. So, um, can I explain what we're doing here? So, let me think. If we have, say, four ads and an ad break, usually, and they're split at like 30 seconds each, okay? Yep. So, at the moment, before 2.6, you just sell them like this, highest bid wins, mm -hmm. that's it. You've now got a few different opportunities, but the cost per second one is, re is really important because now what you can do is separate it so somebody might bid $30 for 30 seconds okay and then um, in which case you get $120 right mm -hmm. for the for the end of this so let's do that whereas um, somebody else might have bid uh, $25 for um, there we go for 15 seconds and so then you'd have two $25 um, bids for 15 seconds for 30. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting $30 here for this one, mm -hmm. you'd end up getting 50 just for that, just yeah. for that same time. Yeah. And if you multiply that, obviously, across your different ad break, then it really increases your yield. So talking about from a publisher's perspective, it's really interesting because they can increase yield like... Like, as you say, it's all based on the fact that the supply is finite. It's not infinite, like the display world is, has no. been or is still is. It's very much the quality of content is finite. So you want to maximize the, the, the most amount of money you get from this. So it is, from a publisher point of view, just logical to implement this. From a demand point of view, though, why would you be buying on a second, a per second basis? Like, where, why is, like positions in that pod mostly because you were talking about it might be more interesting to be at the top of the program well, what's the logic behind that so as a as a brand you'll have made a lot of different um ads that are the same but just in like varying different lengths however what you want to do is also make sure as a publisher that you're selling your prime real estate right and and apportioning that accordingly so this in my opinion like this ad here at the very start of an ad break and this one here at the very end in between content are worth way more than these here yeah and what you can also do is start separating those out and maybe you even put those ahead maybe you don't put those into a unified auction maybe you put those in a in a pg deal at the start Right, and then you can auction off these bits in the middle if you wanted to. Interesting. So you can mix up sort of like where your priorities within the ad server. So yeah, you can have absolutely. your direct sold. And like, it could be that your first ad break in uh, within content um, actually all sits in a PG deal, for example, and then you've got like your ad breaks throughout the content are all auctioned, and then your final one at the end when somebody wants to see like what happens next week and yeah. things like. And can you see this becoming standard in the in the CTV world? 100%. I mean, is, is it is it already a thing in the US? I'm, I'm like I haven't seen much of it here. No, it's something that is available if you uh, implement right. two point six, and so it's coming. And then I think I mean obviously people just follow the money. So as soon as they start seeing that actually this is. Uh, so you you think this is this is perfect for the spot marketplace? So you know you've got your you probably sell it your forward on a CPM because it's a, a forward it's a forward buy. But this could be perfect for the open or to be <coughs> or sort of the open uh, ad marketplace. It's it's. It's just the next the next iteration. It's mm. just the future of how we're going to how we're going to sell 
ads, I think. I don't, I don't think it needs to be open exchange versus uh, PMP or anything like that. I think what I said at the very start, like what Publica focus on doing is, and do it very well is maximising revenue for our publishers whilst also making sure that we create a seamless ad break for the end user. And so that this is just another iteration of that. Yeah. Okay. And um, are we going to see... I'm just interested from an agency point of view, are you going to see them adopt it quick as well? Um, or will they drag their heels around sort of, we like CPM, we're not really, we're not au fait with this sort of like type it's, of buying. It's almost a CPM slash S. Right, So okay. it's, not, it's not a completely different type of mm. way of working. It's just another way of measuring it and making sure that you're getting what you pay for, mm -hmm. I guess. And I don't, I don't see it as a negative impact on agencies and brands at all. Yeah. Um, but I do see it as the publishers are getting a, a, the ability to make a better ad break for yeah. themselves. And also, like, why would you want everything to be exactly the same in an ad break? You yeah. can create some differentiation in there with different times and, yeah, make sure that they're getting the best amount of money they can. Just come back to focus on public for a minute. Um, the company itself, you you kind of uh, sort of uh, kind of present yourself as a modular type company. So how do you work with publishers? So can you, so can you you've got your own stack, your own ad server, plus you have the sort of um, the technology that runs sort of the or to be uh, piece as well. Um, unified I, auction. Yeah, unified auction. You, I mean, how do you work with publishers? So for instance, like you know, people use Google, people use Equity, they use different sort of um, freewheel. How do you work in that instance then with, with the publishers? Um, it depends. It depends on the setup that they've got. It depends on the problems that they're facing at the moment. Um, Publico was built with CTV in mind. It was built from the ground mm -hmm. up. So it hasn't been made for digital advertising and repurposed. Which is one of bad servers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I think one of the things that we see from um, publishers that we go into that are using something that's been repurposed is that they're surprised at how many uh, rules and different reporting and like just the nuances that you mm. can that you can access um, in a CTV ad server versus a digital ad server that's been repurposed so that's one of the of the main things but for us it's it, it truly is about the setup and and where we fit and add value for each each publisher so um, we can just go in and be the unified auction for somebody um, and, and slot, slot into place. We can go in and be a mediation layer for them, so there's that sort of final decisioning. We can be SSAI for people, um, or we can, yeah, we can be their ad server. Yeah. And, and, and lastly, what, what about the growth in that marketplace? So, like, adoption of unified auctions, is that growing? Have you seen a lot in the marketplace? That are, you know, there's been a, a lot of people kind of like pushing back against it, but other people are embracing it. What do you see in the marketplace from that perspective? It's, it's not a heavy lift um, right. for publishers to implement. So it's very easy uh, for them to say yes. And also because you do see that instant revenue uplift, as long mm -hmm. as your setup's correct, um, which we would obviously uh, do our due diligence and ensure beforehand. Um, yeah, you do see that uplift overnight. So it's, it is something that's quite easy and they can also look good in the process. Okay, on that note, Steph, thank you very much for that run <laughs> through. Thank you so much. Hey, it was really interesting. This is going to be an interesting piece here. I want to see how that develops. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be back to explain how this develops in the next couple of months. Steph, Just thank like you. making loads of money, I think. <laughs> Probably just make <laughs> money, that's of, all we need. Millions of dollars. Steph, thank you very much. Thanks. And that was Trader Talk TV, and we'll see you next time.